really this is a classic example of someone that's clearly very motivated and is trying to put lots and lots of training into their week but really the if you if you stack it all up and you look at that ordering of it and the cumulative effect I think it's going to be really hard, especially later on down the line, so when he's starting to reach his physical potential, to keep making improvements. Yeah. What? Hello everyone, uh, we are back, myself and Ollie, uh, for Ask Lattice, another episode, and we have a slightly different setting today. We have this beautifully laid out whiteboard. Um, I'm not going to tell you whose handwriting that is behind, but you will discover quite quickly who has the best handwriting. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So based on last time's Ask Lattice, we asked you guys to comment below and let us know whether you had any sort of ideas about your training plans and would like us to plan them out for you. So hopefully our handwriting is neat enough that we're going to show you that today. And we've, got, we've chosen three examples and we've already contacted the people and they've sent over their training plan with a few ideas about what they're training for and hopefully we're going to dissect that so you can get a little bit of information that might relate to your training as well. So let's start off with the uh, first person who we had uh, contact us on YouTube Then this is Adrian, so hello Adrian, uh, I hope you're watching. Um, we have for you, you have a root goal of 70 plus, so do you want to write some basic notes on it and we'll yeah. We'll get it going. So we have root goal of 70 plus. Do you want me to hold that for you? Yeah. Once you do it. There you go. And uh, Adrian is in a strength training cycle in this one. So he's trying to make gains in basic strength. And at present, he is... So we're going to go through the layout of the week, and then we're going to see if we can put this down in a slightly nicer way. So on a Monday, he's climbing sport climbing routes. So going sport climbing. Tuesday, fingerboarding. S&C pull-ups, Wednesday, boulder or sport, Thursday, finally a rest day, which might give you a clue of what's going to happen here, fingerboard max, Friday, plus sport climbing, Saturday, fingerboard max, plus S&C, Sunday, a rest day. So you can see there that we have Adrian's week laid out and he is coming back to this whole thing of where is he going to or how is he going to lay out his week to really prioritise more on strength gains uh, over anything else. Because he did say afterwards in the email that he would change it up, he was going to do power endurance training. So what's the first thing that really stands out to you, Ollie, on that? I think the first thing you'll see this as a theme throughout today is what's the intent of the training that's going on and whenever someone starts writing stuff down or comes up with an idea it's uh, what is this stimulus there and we're looking for the strength stimulus and he's trying to get stronger because maybe he's already fit enough um, and for me if you look at the actual strength stimulus that's coming into this he's doing so much training that he's going to find it really hard to recover between these sessions and get high quality movement in. So for instance, if we're trying to get stronger fingers, so far we've got two max sessions back to back, um, which is always better to spread throughout the week. I'm not sure if this fingerboard session is also max, um, but then we're also following up with quite a lot of climbing on top of this sport climbing. And once again, it kind of depends on the type of sport climbing he's doing. If it's in short stuff in the Peak District, that will work strength still, but for me, there's so much volume in there that it does mean that he might not get as many strength gains as he would like if he was to focus purely on that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with this. Is that really, this is a classic example of someone that's clearly very motivated and is trying to put lots and lots of training into their week. But really, the, if, you, if you stack it all up and you look at that ordering of it and the cumulative effect, I think it's going to be really hard, especially later on down the line, so when he's starting to reach his physical potential, to keep making improvements. Because if you look at this, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Out of six days in that block there, there's one single rest day. And that's, that's normally a kind of area of concern for us as coaches, isn't it? Yeah, and we do stick with this concurrent training, but mixing all of those together in that block of six days with one rest day is, is quite intense. And... For me, it depends on the athlete a little bit as well. So we have sort of 9A level climbers that might operate at this sort of level, but 
they're also very unlikely going to be doing as many hours at work or they've got such a busy schedule in the rest of life as well if they're going to be doing this much training at high quality so mm. it really comes down to the rest of your life as well trying to fit all this in so for instance um, if you're able to climb first thing in the morning and then do this session in the evening and then this yeah. session in the evening suddenly you can make the most of those gaps in between but if this is someone who works in the daytime and climbs in the evening or trains in the evening every day, all of a sudden this feels quite a bit harder. So for us, a good solution would be switching it up a little bit, maybe doing either a split session here or doing it uh, all in the evening and then having an extra rest day. I think one other thing that stood out on the email from Adrian was that uh, the ordering of each session. So am I correct in saying he was doing sport climbing first because it's movement and then doing max fingerboard? Uh, so I think he was actually doing the correct ordering in terms okay. of doing the fingerboarding first because I think it was on this day here that he would then go later in the day and do the other work. So that was okay, but it was the, it was the ordering on subsequent days. So when I looked at that email and immediately saw sport climbing, which could be quite exhausting and fatiguing the first day on a Monday, and then immediately followed by really high maximal work of fingerboarding and trying to make these strength gains immediately the next day, that's the last thing that I'd be doing because I'm tired from sport climbing. And normally I've got sore skin as well, so I can't actually try really hard in the session. And if you're thinking, or oh, if we add in this extra rest day, then you might be uh, compromising the training day here. It's always okay to drop the volume just a very small amount so that you're getting the high quality rest and you're adapting from it rather than having back-to-back -back sessions. So if the fingerboarding here is just a couple of reps less, it's still worth it to get this extra rest day in. Last point on this one here is, will we do anything here for a little shuffle on this side, or do you think we're okay on that last section there before we move on to the next one? Uh, I mean, ideally I would like a fingerboard max session maybe in here, right. uh, so then we spread three days throughout the week. So bring the FB from over here, and let's take, yeah, because be fatigued in that one there, so we can leave that to the Saturday, just general strength and conditioning. Yeah, spread exactly. Out. Yeah, so hopefully that helps. And uh, Adrian, if you're seeing this here, um, amazing motivation. It's clear that you want to put so much hard work in, but really try and focus down a little bit and spread things out to allow that recovery because we want to train, but we also want to recover. Okay, so now we'll move on to the second person that we're going to go through today, and that is Ben. Uh, Ben's a boulder specialist. He's currently operating at sort of a 6B plus, 6C standard, and wants to climb his first font 7A soon. So someone who's focused purely on bouldering. Um, Ben's got a really interesting case that we see a lot where he gets to the climbing gym maybe once or twice a week at the most. Uh, has a fingerboard and a ring set up at home though, so he's trying to fit in stuff at home throughout the rest of the week. So his goal is for font 7A. Yeah, I've got on the left. Cool. And so what we've got so far for Ben is on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, he's doing mobility on all of those days. So... Oh, cracky. Monday, Tuesday... That's plenty of mobility. Great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as a starting point, totally okay with that. If you've got the time to add that in, and a lot of people do it in the morning, whether it's yoga, so Wednesday and Sunday off. Um, if people add that in into yoga or they just do regular stretching, that's fantastic. And it's a great place to, to start off. Um, however, when it comes to limited time, and this is what we're gonna talk about in a moment, uh, this is something to keep in mind. So then what we're gonna do is on Tuesday and on Fridays doing fingerboard max. So fingerboard being a max hang session is probably what he's talking about. So that's looking for strength gains, trying to increase his finger strength. And we're assuming that he's probably doing this at home in the, in the morning. So on Tuesdays and Fridays as well, he's doing a fun climb. Yep. So unstructured climbing, going to the bouldering wall, hanging out with friends, doing problems, and just mixing it up. No particular structure in mind during those sessions. Okay, and then the last thing is Thursday and Sunday, he's got calisthenics. Thursday. So he's got two rest days in again, which are Thursday and Saturday, completely off. Great to see two rest days in a week. 
Um, and generally, he spread all his sessions throughout the week. But I think what me and Tom thought when we were looking through this is specificity. And that's something that's really important when we're looking at anyone's training plan. Yeah, I think um, if you, you look at this plan across the week, is, the, is, it, is it Ben? Yeah. Yeah, so Ben, you've clearly got an amount of time to put into your training and you're doing loads of mobility work and also this calisthenics work, which is great. So you've got the time put aside to it. And I suspect that you're the, one of the reasons why you're doing this is it kind of fits with the facilities that you have. Um, but in our experience is that if you've got the time to be able to do this kind of stuff, is try and push the training or the time that you do things much more into something which has a specific reward into climbing. So change up those calisthenic exercises, which obviously are good for strength and conditioning for the upper body, into sports specific exercises that you might do on a fingerboard or a bar and are very much more in the planes of movement that we would use in climbing. And just use that time in a bit more of a focused way because you are really quite limited on the amount of time that you can go to the climbing gym and you're using a lot of that time in an unstructured, fun way of climbing. So really hone down and use that for your, your exercise that you're going on. So if we keep in mind that uh, Ben's obviously keeping this fun climbing time just to be exploring movement and having enjoying his climbing. So if we imagine we're keeping that as unstructured because that's something we could quite easily manipulate if we wanted to. What can we add on to the other sessions, which is going to train his forearms to cope with that anaerobic stress of being a boulderer and increase his work capacity? So a big thing for boulderers is it's great being able to have enough strength to be able to complete movements. But if you're away on a trip or got a day out, the amount of attempts that you have on each problem can also dictate whether you actually complete it or not. So we do need like a good work capacity. Mm. So for us, if we're not going to play around with the climbing sessions, these fingerboard sessions, we can start adding on extra little bits to it to increase that work capacity. So, so far we've got max hangs, which is usually anywhere between five and 15 seconds, depending on what protocol you use. And usually you're not going to need too many reps at that because it's so intense. What we often do is we add on energy systems work on top of that. So that could be anaerobic repeaters or even slightly aerobic repeaters afterwards. So seven on three off or 10 on five off and doing certain amounts of sets and reps of that to increase the work capacity of the forearm. The other thing that's nice to um, add on if you're gonna do uh, fingerboard sessions at home, and these are really convenient for the time that you have, is to do some kind of um, climbing specific uh, pull-up exercises on a fingerboard as well. So a lot of the modern fingerboards have different levels of holds on them. So you have maybe four tiers of holds and you can do things like offset hangs, and offset pull-ups on those figure boards as well. Um, and you can even do uh, placing your feet on the floor, um, or sorry, on the floor, sorry, on a, a chair or um, a, a sort of object that uh, keeps your body underneath the board. So you're putting 60, 70, 80% of weight on the fingerboard and you can move around on the board and you can recreate uh, climbing movements. And it's another really good way of building up the work capacity at the same time as working the muscle groups in your upper body in a climbing specific manner. And that's a really good one for any of you students out there that don't have access to a wall all the time. We used to see it all the time where you'd have a fingerboard hung up and everyone's trying to do laps on it, which looks ridiculous, but if you have a group of you, it ends up being quite funny. Uh, so making up a little session out of this, go for the max hangs first, then do any of the pulling exercises, and then I would say do it like a quarter or half a session of that energy systems work, whether it's anaerobic repeaters, so the volume's not too high just on the fingerboard because you need to build up over time. If you do all of those sessions back to back fully, it might be a little bit too much. Yeah, and I think overall is that the layout and the spread in terms of training and recovery in this week looks good to us. It's certainly blocking it in there and you're allowing recovery to occur from any hard climbing sessions. So that, that on the whole is, is good, isn't it? So good luck with the 7A and hopefully that's helped you out a little bit to get you closer to getting it. Okay, third question we have now is for a light plan user, actually. So this will be really interesting because we will have written that plan, but the uh, chap that we've written the plan for, Chuck, is going to have four days of training across his week, and we're gonna see how we're gonna place 
his light plan uh, content into the best laid out plan within that week. Um, so what are we looking at in terms of stimulus uh, for improvement? Good question. Main stimulus or main goals that we're looking for here is we have finger strength improvements, and then we also have work capacity, which is both aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity. Okay, so we've got two different stimulus to try and work towards and four days per week. So keeping in mind those first two in terms of what's the stimulus we want to increase and how the specificity of those goals are going to be accomplished. Yeah. So we've got the sessions all down here. Yeah, so these are the sessions that uh, we have written into the plan and we're going to lay out in the way that we would do it. And we also have our Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Sunday is our climbing days. And for Chirk, we have both the Friday and the Sunday as being the big climbing days. So what you might see is we've got these numbers down here. So one is obviously a full session and 1.5 is gonna be uh, one and a half sessions, but that can be split up into different smaller sessions. So you could do a shorter, bolder session, a half session, plus a whole session separately. So, and anything where it's got 0.5, it's exactly the same training, same intensity, but the session is reduced by half the amount of sets. So instead of doing six sets at V10, I might do three sets at V10. Okay, so we should start with high, highest intensity, yep. shortest volume work, first of all. So let's go for the fingerboard. I think we're gonna lay this into the earliest part of the Tuesday. And then we're also gonna follow that up with a 0 0.5 ANCAP session. So hard fingerboard session followed by a relatively short, non-exhaustive anaerobic capacity session. Then we're gonna put another high intensity bit of work, uh, bouldering, a full unit bouldering on the Thursday. And then finally, last bit of really hard bouldering is 0 0.5, which is gonna go onto the Sunday on that big session. So you can see already, what we're trying to do is spread out that high intensity work across the week so the recovery is adequate. Next, we're going to add in a 0.5 aero cap on the Sunday after the bouldering session. And because we also have a long session on a Friday, we're gonna do the full aero cap session on the Friday on here because we have more time and plenty of it in the climbing session. So on the, the Sunday, <clears throat> obviously we've put in aero cap after bouldering and some people get a little bit worried that you're doing a strength stimulus followed by something else. If you're going to have a half session afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you have enough rest of 10 to 20 minutes and then try and keep the aero cap session to either the more interval style aero cap or the really, really easy longer stuff. Avoid that mixed stimulus aero cap where it's uh, half the climbing time is hard, half the climbing time is easy and you have to recover because that's the stimulus which might upset the strength gains, but it's still not too bad to add that in. Yeah, common question that one, isn't it? Um, okay, so we also have some uh, hard strength and conditioning work as well to be completed within the week. So we followed up after the Friday full aero cap with a one full pull-up session on the bar and also a shoulder antagonist work. So you can see that we're building together and grouping l sort of more uh, hard, uh, fairly extensive conditioning sessions in with climbing sessions on the days where we've got plenty of spare time. And so on the Friday, we've now got pull-ups and the shoulder antagonist work after the aero cap. If this aero cap is gonna be quite an intense session, then have those basic conditioning movements afterwards, even though they're more focused on strength. But because once again, we're looking at work capacity and work capacity of the forearm in particular. This aero cap session is going to take priority. If we were looking at that stimulus and saying, I want to become a better boulder or improve my strength, then the pull-ups is probably going to go above the aero cap just because you can still complete that aero cap in good form even though you've done pull-ups beforehand. So the ordering does change things around depending once again on the specificity of your goals. So we're left with now our one and a half TRX and our two mobilities. So we went for a 0.5 TRX, so a shorter TRX session on the Monday, sorry, the Tuesday rather. 
so that Tuesday session there wasn't a really hard, exhaustive session. So we're quite happy to put that short session of that in earlier on the week. And then a full session on the big day on the Sunday at the end. And of course, it's nicely followed up by mobility session as well, because plenty of time down the wall and we can really increase that work, general work capacity overall. And we can still fit in all the training in the training plan, which I think leaves us one. Left. One, yeah. One mobility session, which we were, can Ollie guess where he's going to put it? This one? Thursday. Yeah, so you can see it's like nice empty gap there. Still spreads out the week and we've just got re adequate recovery, but we've also got plenty of energy into session. So one of the things we took into account here is we spread all that intense sessions throughout the week, but if you get to the Sunday and you're tired or you're going to go outside or do something different, or you're just feeling like you can't complete all the sessions, these smaller half sessions are actually going to be a bit easier to drop in the worst case scenario and TRX mobility can hopefully be done at home or added on to like the back of another session later on. What you don't want to do is put too much waiting at the back of the week because then if you do happen, something comes up in life where you're not able to do it, then you end up start trying to push it back a week and then add it all into a further week, which starts to mean that you overload and you could end up with injuries or not getting anything done and feel demotivated. Yeah, it's almost like a a bit of a downside to having quite a lot of times or time dedicated in the week where you you can train and so you could almost end up thinking I've got the uh, the liberty of plenty of time I'll leave it till later and later in the week and you have these really nice short high quality sessions early in the week and then you're trying to ram it all in the weekend and potentially also climb outside so tricky isn't it yeah and with all of these sort of plans that we've made out once again you've got to take into what you actually enjoy doing together um, I know I personally find it quite nice to do fingerboarding and then doing anaerobic capacity work. I struggle to do a really hard anaerobic capacity session where I'm getting really powered out, followed by an aerocap session. Even though that's absolutely fine to do together, personally, based on skin and based on motivation, that's something I never put together. So try it out and then experiment on what you actually enjoy being down the wall for. Some people also don't like doing loads of conditioning together, so just keep it in mind. So there you have it, we have three training plans that we've gone through and broken down and given you what would be mine and Ollie's opinion on how to uh, structure that week. We hope you find that useful. There's always loads of discussion about this in our Facebook community page. Ollie and I get in there and comment every now and again and we'll help you guys out. And as ever, it's a click to like, subscribe on our channel and more coming from us soon.